Hello and welcome to this VBA for Excel beginner tutorial. Today I'll be taking you for an introduction to the Visual Basic Editor in Excel. In some of our other tutorials we create macros using the macro recorder. However, while the macro recorder is an extremely useful tool, the actions that you can perform using it are very limited. Therefore, if we want to make more complex macros, we're going to have to use the Visual Basic Editor. There are two main ways in which you can open up the Visual Basic Editor. Firstly, you can go up to the Developer tab and then press the Visual Basic Editor button here. Or alternatively, you can press the shortcut key to open up, which is Alt and F11. So I'm going to go ahead and press Alt and F11 to open up now. You'll see that a new window will open up, which should look something like this. Up here, you have the menu bar and the toolbar, and down the side here, is the Project Explorer and the Properties window. You may also have another window down here which is called the Immediate window. But if you haven't like me, you can open it up by pressing Ctrl and G. However, this is mainly used for debugging code, so I'm going to go ahead and close this as we won't be using it in this tutorial. Now, if you're going through this tutorial using a new workbook without any macros stored in it, you'll notice that this middle area is empty. This is where the code window usually is. To create a VBA macro using the Visual Basic Editor, we're going to have to insert a new VBA module to the project. There are two ways to do this. You can either click on the project name here, and then go up to Insert and click on Module. Or alternatively, you can right click on the project name, go down to Insert and step the module. I'm going to go ahead and insert a new module now. You'll notice that the code window has now appeared so we can start using VBA code to create a macro. First thing we're going to have to do is give our macro a name. The macro we're going to be creating will technically be a sub procedure. A sub procedure is a group of VBA statements that perform an action with Excel. So to give our sub procedure a name, we need to type in sub, then the name of our macro, and finally, if we have any extra arguments, we need to put these in a set of parentheses at the end. However, in most cases, these will be empty. For this macro, I'm going to create a sub procedure that asks the user to enter their name into an input box and then displays their message box saying hello and the name the user just entered. So, to give the macro a name, I'm just going to type in sub, then space, then enter name, and then a set of empty parentheses. Then I'm just going to press enter. You will notice that the editor has automatically entered an end sub statement into our macro. The actions that we want Excel to perform must be replaced between these two statements. The first thing we want to do is to get the user to enter their name into an input box and then store this name somewhere so that we can call upon it later. The way data like this is stored in macros is through variables. A variable is simply a name storage location. I want to store the user's name in the variable called name, and to do this, I'm just going to type in name here. Now we need to assign a value to this variable, and you do this by using the equal sign operator. So I'm just going to type in space, and then the equal sign, after the variable name. We want the variable name to equal the name that the user enters into the input box. So we need to put our input box function after the equal sign. The input box function is a special VBA function that displays a simple dialog box and asks the user for some input. So, to use it, just type in a space and an input box. And then, in a set of parentheses, we need to enter the prompt that will be displayed in the input box, instructing the user on what to enter. We also must make sure that the prompt we enter is in a set of quotation marks, or else we get an error. So, for this example, I'm just going to type please enter your name. Now we have stored the user's name in a variable called name, we can proceed to the next step, which is displaying the message hello and then the user's name in a message box. To do this, we're going to use the message box VBA function. So, on the next line, type in msg box and after this, 
we need to type what we want the message box to display. So enter a space and then type a quotation mark and then type hello another space and another quotation mark. After this we want to get it to display whatever is stored in a variable called name and to do this we just need to type in a space and an ampersand and another space and then the variable's name which in this case is name. Once we've done this we can test our macro. To run the macro we could go back to Excel for example by clicking here and then go to the developer tab and run the macro from the macros list. However, this can be quite tedious, so a quicker way to run the macro is to make sure that the cursor is active anywhere between these two statements. And then either click here on the play button or press F5. I'm going to go ahead and press F5 now. As you can see, it's automatically gone back to Excel and a dialog box has appeared telling the user to enter their name just as planned. To test the next step, I'm going to enter a name and press OK. And there we go. The macro has successfully stored the name from the previous step and displayed it here with our preceding hello statement just as we planned. That's all I wanted to go through in this tutorial. This is just a brief introduction to the VBA editor in Excel, but I hope it has shown you just how much more you can do with VBA than just recording your actions with the macro recorder. Thank you and check back for some more tutorials from VBA4Excel.com.